This video is brought to you by Ridge. Stick around to hear more about the limited time discount they're providing to the entire upper echelon community. Okay, Elden Ring. Elden Ring is basically open world Dark Souls with a collaborative story from George R.R. R. Martin, the guy who wrote Game of Thrones. The good parts of Game of Thrones, not the last seasons of the TV show that made no sense and butchered entire storylines. The game is being developed by From Software, who also created Bloodborne, Demon Souls, Dark Souls, and Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. In the background is footage from the gameplay preview for Elden Ring right now, emphasizing that they are known for a very specific type of game, and this one will be no different as it follows in that footprint. Now, yes, there will be minor distinctions that stand out, such as attack variants, enemy archetype variants, and the fact that the game is open world, but the reality is From Software has a very distinctive development style, which has become renowned in the video game world as brutally difficult, unforgiving, and unapologetic about its own intention. That is heralded by some as an explicitly appealing thing. Games like Dark Souls offer a sense of accomplishment, that's a very important word, when they are beaten, and while I can't say that I'm a veteran of all the Souls games, I can say that I'm a veteran of the second and the third, as well as Sekiro and Bloodborne. Many players feel that these games offer a uniquely designed challenge that is lacking in other areas of the general industry. They feel that the brutal difficulty, the lack of alternative options, can lead to a distinctly superior, challenging, and motivating experience as you learn to overcome various obstacles through dedication, adaptation, and skill. But for others, those games are an oppressively designed obstacle in their own ability to play whatever I want. I'm talking mainly about gaming journalists. Okay, no, that's not the only demographic, right? That was a little bit of a joke, but it's certainly the most vocal demographic who laments the construction of a game that is brutally difficult by design. For years now, at the very least, raging since the time of Dark Souls 3, probably before, but I wasn't really in touch with the industry as much back then, but for many years now, a debate has been raging about the inclusion of easy mode in From Software games. On one side, a certain demographic is enthusiastically against the idea that these games must, or even ever should, be expected to contain difficulty augmentations of any kind, because their creative vision is, by design, holistically unique as a direct result of their difficulty and brutality. On the other side of that spectrum is a group that claims these titles need to include difficulty options because that failure is akin to gatekeeping, which is a ludicrous concept, and I have a whole video about that word in its entirety, but whatever, and results in a stratification of community culture based on who can and cannot beat those games, with the latter being assumed as some sort of insult. If you can't beat a Dark Souls game, you're looked down upon by a certain group. This is what they allege. One side says, get good, scrub, and the other says, stop gatekeeping my hobby, and the world spins round on its little axis as these groups continue to get upset as a result fairly constantly. Well, good news. Not really. You'll see. This is an absolute joke. But good news, because Elden Ring might have allegedly solved the issue of easy mode in From Software games, finally allowing everyone to get what they want out of the title, not just the gaming elite. Okay, time for today's sponsor. A while ago I linked up with Ridge Wallets and did a number of different videos, and today I'm happy to say that I've partnered up with them again for some more. And this time they have a bunch of new products, some of which they sent me, which are just as amazing as the wallets. Of course, the main attraction is still their sleek, industrial, minimalist wallets themselves, which have room for 12 cards plus cash and alternate between a clip and a strap, but now they also have pens, high-quality knives, and new designs to choose from that make an amazing source of Christmas gifts, birthday gifts, and personal accessories. Quality matters, and Ridge has the highest quality possible. If you want to test that out for yourself, they offer a free 30-day trial, and if it's not for you, you can send it back. Again, the right wallet is a big deal. You use it every day, after all, and Ridge is the right wallet to have. If you use the link down below, ridge.com slash UEG, in the description, and code UEG, you can get 10% off your entire order. Again, link down below, code UEG, for 10% off your order. Big thank you to Ridge for sponsoring the video. All right, here's a bit of context. Quote, an easy mode has never ruined a game, Kotaku. Why the Soulsborne games should consider an easy mode, Collider. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice needs to respect its players and add an easy mode, Forbes. You get the point. This is just general media coverage on the topic. But for Elden Ring, we have a new narrative dawning, not even from just one source, but one in particular, which claims that the title might put an end to this debate due to its revolutionary design choices. From Kotaku Australia, we can see the following, quote, Elden Ring may put an end to the easy mode debate for good. That's a tall order. It won't just put an end to the easy mode debate for one particular game installation, it might end the entire thing and put it to rest in perpetuity. Let's dive in, because that sounds incredible. 
Moment of truth, it's an idiotic perspective and it makes no sense. I don't want to read this entire thing and it's not worth the time, so I'll summarize a few paragraphs, I will quote them, but hopefully this will give everyone the gist of what's being discussed. Quote, Dark Souls has been a favorite target of this debate because its difficulty is inherent to the sense of achievement it conveys. Folks on one side of the debate say beating Dark Souls should mean something, and you're denying people a proper reward, and even inner growth, if you hand out participation medals. Folks on the other side contend that we basically lose nothing by including an easy mode, and that beating the game on normal still means the same thing it always did. So what's the harm? End quote. Continuing on further down, because some of it just isn't relevant, quote, Elden Ring solves this argument in the best way possible, by simply offering the player more choice. No need to select anything from a menu, lock yourself into a mode, or have a conversation like, but did you beat it on normal? None of that, because all of this is baked organically into the game. You can beat Elden Ring's challenges, some of which are sure to be brutal, in so many different ways, the easy mode debate isn't even a conversation anymore. End quote. Now the good stuff, and I know it's going to be kind of long, but bear with me. Quote, Elden Ring is an open world. Different enemies will populate different zones, similar to what you'd see in an MMO, and more important enemies and NPCs carry out their unique schedules through the day-night cycle. Pull an enemy too far out of their territory and they'll retreat to it, which means you can skedaddle as soon as things get rough. Get low on health or pull too much aggro, and there's usually a full 360 degrees of potential escape vectors. You can just leave. Do something else. I think Elden Ring is deliberately structured like this, and it doesn't even have to be a difficulty thing. The first real boss is quite tough, and many people skipped it to come back later when mounted. I beat it on foot, but when I came across a dragon later, I said nope and hightailed it, whereas others beat it." End quote. Honestly, I'm not really sure how much more I can actually take of this, so I'll condense even further for the sake of time, really, and to summarize in my own words. There is tons of choice. You don't have to fight what is right in front of you. Instead, you can fight other things if you want to get stronger instead. Magic and weapon arts are really powerful, which helps to kill bosses. And then, this is my personal favorite, and this one needs a quote. Bosses might go for the full six-hit combo, or they might stop at some point prior. Learn the tells, and you'll be able to spot it. It's up to this shield-happy warrior to pick the last hit in the combo, and then unleash the counter. End quote. Okay, how do I even begin here? First of all, open world formats inside a From Software game is definitely a new splash of mechanical decision making. But, it has almost never been required that you progress to one specific area at a time. From Software has made an incredible effort to always allow different progression, and avoid the requirement that one boss comes at a specific time, unalterable, and always consistent. Some are optional, some are secret, some you can skip and go back, some are bait that you probably shouldn't fight early on, and the list goes on. This level of depth has always been a thing, and not just with bosses either. Souls games and Sekiro, and anything in this particular lane from this particular developer, has the option to grind progression in some way or another. Don't like that enemy? Go a different way and fight different ones, or skip past them and find another bonfire. This is not new. This is standard. It just didn't exist on a particular 360 degree plane. You can go find Estus upgrades instead of smashing your head into a wall, or smash a specific set of enemies over and over for the souls. End result, you are stronger, game is easier, stop complaining. How is it possible that easy mode isn't even a discussion because of game knowledge? How is it actually a thing that is somehow purported to mitigate the furious debate over easy mode when game knowledge is the most rudimentary and obvious mechanism in Souls games since the dawn of time? For anyone who doesn't know, and this speaks to the customization aspect as well, as if that's going to somehow solve the debate over easy mode, you can do incredible things in Dark Souls. You can make builds, use different weapons, alter your combat tactics, find the different upgrades all over the map, and it's a pretty incredible map, have magic versus physical specs, and so much more. The game is so deceptively deep, it provides lasting content for massive YouTube channels on a consistent basis ever since it was launched, and the obvious response here is, Yes, game knowledge is king, and of course game knowledge will help you win. This has been and will be true of every game that has ever and will ever exist. No knowledge, you suck and you lose. Tons of knowledge, you know how to win and you probably do win. Next one, NPCs populating different zones and running away if you get too far away from them. What the actual fuck am I reading? That has always been true of From Software games. It's true of practically any game ever, for the most part, and it has no bearing on why or how this one in particular is going to put an end to the debate of easy mode forever. 
Magic and tactical diversity has always been a thing. Leveraging it properly has always made games easier. Stealth was, in effect, always there in this series. It just wasn't a dedicated mechanic, per se, even though there's an entire game on that now. And my personal favorite, seriously it is, bosses might go for the full six-hit combo, or they might stop at some point prior. Learn the tells, and you'll be able to spot it. This is a description of the most basic building block for Souls-like titles, and any title for that matter, dear lord. Learn the attack animations. Elden Ring is a massively anticipated game, that much is true. I myself am greatly looking forward to it as well, and I can't wait to see what it holds. But this game is not going to put an end to the debate over easy mode, it's very likely going to exacerbate it. This game is going to hit the market on a scale that the Dark Souls titles probably never even dreamed of, as a result of its collaboration with Game of Thrones author, world-renowned author at this point in time, George R.R. R. Martin, and that influx of a casual audience is going to pour gasoline on the fire of a debate about easy modes. That is made even worse, by the way, by the idea that consistent, ever-present, and objective truths about basic game design are somehow the answer, or the cure, to this long-standing and very particular debate over difficulty. It's just not true. Everything held up about this game as a solution to past issues isn't actually a solution to the issues that existed in the past, because it existed before. It is not even remotely possible that this title, by using consistent game mechanics that have hardly ever changed, ever, will somehow end the discussion forever in perpetuity, and it is honestly baffling to me that anyone will look at this release and think anything other than, oh god, here it comes. I foresee, at least personally, an incredible title with dozens of hours of fun, but also a schism in the player base as people flood into the world at a rate never before seen by From Software as a developer, some of them demanding a solution to the naturally intended difficulty that will inevitably appear over time. Those demands will kick off the standard discussion of difficulty for this series, fueled by an intrusively pretentious gaming media, which will put us right where we always are when a game like Sekiro or Bloodborne or Dark Souls 3 hits the market. Elden Ring will be no different. Bottom line, the debate over easy mode is not going to be laid to rest in perpetuity by Elden Ring. It might even actually get worse. But that's it. If you want support, please consider heading over to Patreon or Locals. A subscription on either of those platforms is going to become an integral part of how I manage the channel. There is also another YouTuber to support linked down below in the description, as well as merchandise, a YouTube platform alternative called Odyssey, and a few more things, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.